The Wingsung 630 is a large cigar-shaped fountain pen that's a piston filler. It's fairly reminiscent of the 1000 US dollar Mont Blanc 149, however this won't cost you anywhere near that much. It was originally released with a gold nib costing about 130 US dollars, but recently it's been released with a stainless steel nib for about 30 US dollars. It's available in black, red, and the blue that you see here, although in person this blue is closer to a turquoise. The bottom finial is conical in shape, as is the top, and the top finial is separated from the cap with a single gold band. We then have a bent metal clip, which is springy and functional. The cap is mostly straight with a slight taper down to a three-piece gold band, which reads, Wing Sung 630, made in China. There's then a little bit of exposed plastic followed by a step down to the barrel. The cap comes off in one and about a quarter turns to reveal a large stainless steel two-tone nib. This one is a number eight nib and it reads 1947. It has the Wing Sung logo and Wing S. And on the back, we have a typical black plastic feed. I don't see any markings for the nib size on this, but I did order it in a fine. The section starts with a flare up, which is part of the nib unit. And then we have a straight portion followed by threads that are smooth to the touch. We then have a large ink window. This one is slotted, but it's also available as a solid clear piece. And then the barrel is fairly straight till about this point, at which point it starts to taper down to another gold band, followed by the end finial, and the end finial doubles as a piston knob. In the hand, the pen has some heft, especially due to the brass piston unit, which we'll take a look at in a little bit, but it's very well balanced. And the cap posts deeply without back weighting the pen at all. However, it's not the most secure posting experience in the world. So in a pinch, you could post it, but I wouldn't recommend it for regular use. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Wing Sun 630, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Before we get into the disassembly of the Wing Sun 630, I wanted to take a moment here to compare it with two other large Chinese fountain pens that were recently released. Up top, we have the Jinhao 9019 Dadao, which is fairly reminiscent of the pilot Namiki Emperor. And down below, we have the Jin Hao X159, which also takes inspiration from the Mont Blanc 149. However, the Wing Sung 630 actually comes closer to a direct copy. In terms of overall length, all three pens are about the same size. And in terms of thickness, the Wing Sung 630 is the thinnest followed by the Jin Hao X159, and the thickest one is the Jin Hao 9019. Let's take a look at these pens uncapped. Uncapped, all three pens are about the same overall length. The Jin Hao's both use the same number eight size steel nib, and the Wing Sung also has a number eight size steel nib, but it's branded Wing Sung, and it's a little bit more exposed than either of the Jin Hao's. All three pens have sections that start with a flare-up followed by a tapering portion and then each have threads which are smooth to the touch. The Jin Hao's then have a step up to the barrel on both models whereas the Wing Sung is a more gradual transition to the barrel and it also has those ink window slots. Let's take a look at these pens posted. All three caps post deeply but the Wing Sung is the least secure in its posting and the overall length of the pens are fairly similar. The X159 is the shortest, and then the Wing Sung and the Dadao are very close. I think the Dadao is just a little bit longer. If you like seeing these comparisons, I am considering doing a uh, shootout between these three models where I would compare the different features, attributes, and what it's like to live with these three pens directly side by side. And if you'd be interested in that sort of video, please let me know in the comments below. To disassemble the Wing Sung 630, you are going to need a wrench. This one came with my pen that I show in the unboxing, but if yours does not come with it, 
you can pick up a Wingsung wrench pretty easily on eBay and AliExpress. The cap unscrews. And if we look inside this cap, let me pull in some LED lighting. We can see that there is a screw at the bottom of the cap. You can take a flathead screwdriver and uh, twist that screw in order to remove the top finial, but there really shouldn't be any need to do that for regular maintenance, so I would just leave this cap as is. The nib and feed unscrew from the pen as part of a nib unit with a collar. And it appears that the nib and feed would be able to be pulled right out of this, but unfortunately mine won't budge. And if I look closer, there are two little recessed slots uh, on either side of the feed. So I'm guessing that there might be a tool to disassemble this further. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Um, so for regular cleaning, I'm just using a bulb syringe to force water through this unit, which works just fine. The section does not unscrew from the barrel, but it is important to note that there's a pretty large opening there, so it is easy to flush out this pen. Um, but if you do want to further disassemble it, twist the piston knob in the counterclockwise direction, grab your wrench, and continue to twist clockwise. Pretty soon, the piston unit should come out. At this point, the barrel is completely empty. You shouldn't really need to disassemble this further for regular maintenance. I would just throw some silicone grease on the threads as well as the head of this piston rod in order to uh, get good, smooth operation. But if you want to, you can continue to unscrew the piston knob to remove the piston rod. Um, continuing to unscrew the piston knob, the piston knob itself comes out. And then we have a key that slides out of this brass connector piece. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, we'll start with our key and our brass connector. The key just slides right in. And then we'll give the piston knob a few twists, grab our piston rod. And if you look closely, there is a slotted hole at the end of this connector piece. We'll line that up in there and give it a twist to screw down the unit. Now what we're looking for for good alignment is the piston knob to butt up against this first flange on this brass piece. And when it reaches that flange, we want the piston rod to be as retracted as possible. Let's give it a twist. That's pretty good, although we do have a decent amount of rod still exposed here. So I'm going to unscrew it and try and reassemble this again. So here we're going to unscrew the piston knob a little bit more and then push the rod back in. There, that looks very good. We'll then take this unit and screw it into the barrel. It's a counterclockwise screw. As you get to the bottom, the rod will start extending and the knob will come out, which gives you access to these flaps, which you can then tighten down in a counterclockwise turn. We'll then take our nib and feed unit, screw that in place, and then lastly our cap. At this point, the pen is fully assembled and ready to ink up. Inking up the Wingsung 630, today I selected Sailor Yamadori, which is a nice teal ink that closely matches the finish on this pen. Inking up this pen has proven to be challenging due to its size, not only the width of the section, but also the length of the nib. Um, there's no chance of being able to fit it into one of Diamine's standard ink bottles, and their easiest time will be most likely with a big ink bottle like this Oroshizuku from Pilot. I tried inking this pen with a Paniter Traveler's Inkwell, which is uh, marketed to basically fit any pen, and this one actually doesn't fit. So if you own this pen, it may be worth investing in something like this. This is an Ink Miser Inkwell. It will fit inside this. But let's see how we do with the Sailor Yamadori. 
You want to make sure that the piston rod is extended all the way down. Submerge the nib in ink and draw it up. I'm going to extend it one more time to make sure we get a nice full fill. Good. I'm also going to show you a side view just to give you an idea of how much um, space I have to fill up this pen in this ink bottle. So here's a side view of the pen inside this ink bottle. The inlet is right at the top of this section and you can see if you start running low on ink, you're really going to be out of luck filling this pen. All right, let's go ahead, wipe off the excess ink. Really only touched the nib because the nib is extended so far. Cap up our ink. Cap up our pen. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Wingsung 630 cap and screws. And we have a stainless steel. Again, I don't see a marking for the tipping size, but it was advertised as a fine. And this nib, I've said it before, but this one is truly the case. This is the nicest stainless steel nib that I've ever written with. This one, if my eyes were closed, I would say that this was a gold nib and not just any gold nib, but a very well-tuned gold nib similar to a Pilot. I'm extremely impressed with this nib. Our ink. is Sailor. Yamadori. Hopefully it's coming across well on this camera. The feed, the nib are all extremely wet. There's a nice amount of line variation and bounce that I feel. Let me turn the page and show you flex. Remarkable. Not, not a flex pen, but you certainly get a lot of line variation by flexing this nib a little bit. Whatever Wingsung is doing with this nib, keep it up. I'm very impressed. For reverse writing, Uh, that was me at the beginning. I didn't quite have the nib down on paper, but you can see the ink flow kept up just fine. Um, you don't really get much line variation. It is a bit thinner in reverse, so, I mean, you could do it if you wanted to, but honestly, most of the line variation with this nib comes from applying pressure. Just carefully. Absolutely outstanding nib. So what do I think of the Wingsung 630? I really like this pen. Um, the writing experience, as you just saw, is pretty darn close to flawless. If I had to choose one stainless steel nib to keep for the rest of my life, this one is the best one that I've come across. I love that it's a piston filler and you get a huge ink supply which really is fitting for such a large pen. And I also enjoy the comfort of the writing experience. The section is nice and comfortable. It is a little bit thick, but it's uh, very manageable. The areas where I feel like this pen could be improved, there are a few. One, again, is the posting experience. It posts deeply and comfortably. Doesn't backweight the pen, but it is not very secure. Um, the piston unit, I think is extremely well done. It does take a little bit of practice to get every 
item lined up properly, every component in there, but it's doable. Lamy 2000, again, is kind of my gold standard for piston disassembly. The nib, I mean, I already have kind of boasted about it. I can't speak higher volumes about how well this uh, nib is tuned. The size of it is a bit of an issue. Um, I mean, you do have limited choices with what ink bottles you can use, and you have to maybe go about different ways of filling up this pen, which is a little bit disappointing. I love that they included the wrench to disassemble the piston unit, but I wish that they also included the tool to disassemble the nib and feed. That would have been useful. I would say I wish that they made the section removable, but the fact that you can still access it so easily with a big opening from where the nib and feed go in makes it not really an, an issue. Um, the only other thing is the variations. I do feel like you're pretty limited on color choices. You have this fun blue, but then you also have the typical black and kind of a boring muted red. I wish that they had more fun colors with this pen. Even a demonstrator model to show off that brass piston mechanism would be pretty cool to see. But besides that, I think this is an outstanding pen. I do think that it is a step up on the Wingsung 629, which is, you know, one number less. I don't know if these are very much related, but they are both piston fillers. The Wingsung 629 does have um, more customizable options with the finial choices. So maybe that's one other spot where this one could be improved. It would be nice to see it maybe offered with flat finials. But as I showed you, the writing experience, which is really where everything counts, is outstanding. The comfort is perfectly fine. Um, you could use this pen for quick notes as well as long writing form, especially with that extra ink supply. Uh, the moral question of how closely this resembles the Mont Blanc 149 is an issue, um, but I would assume there probably aren't very many trademarks because a lot of pens do look very similar to each other. So if that doesn't bother you, I do think that this pen is a pretty outstanding writer and a great addition to any pen collection. And that just leaves me to say... Thank you for watching.